Okay, I'm here I'm going to run through some of the basic ideas of particle theory, um, sort of touching on what it means to a couple other things like the states of matter, but uh, I will then go and do a separate video on that specifically. Okay, so particle theory. Number one says all matter is made of particles. So no matter what you're looking at, the air that you're breathing, the uh, computer screen you're currently looking at, every one of those pieces of material is composed of these tiny, tiny, tiny particles. And in addition to that, number two, the different types of matter have different types of particles. So if you're looking at water, for example, then we know that all of those water molecules are made up of these H2O particles that look a little bit like this. And those particles are different from, say, the particles that you would see if you looked at a piece of salt where the goes where the particles look like a repeating crystal here our definition of a particle is a little fuzzy do we consider each one of these ions its own particle or do we consider the simplest unit of the crystal a particle that's something that's a little bit more tricky and we're, we're going to stay away from but what we can clearly see is the particles that make up this substance and the particle that makes up this substance are totally different. And when we have water, what we have is a whole lot of these particles really close together. And they're very, very small and very, very close together. So it almost seems like they're one continuous substance. The analogy I like to think of when I try to understand how, say, your computer screen can look like one solid piece of an item even though it's made up of these tiny particles, is I think about the pixels that are making up the screen that you're looking at right now. If you look very, very closely at your screen, you can see that there are tiny little individual lights that are lighting up in different colors to create all of the things that you're seeing. But if you step back from your screen and you look at the screen as a whole, it's very easy to ignore those tiny little pieces and just see the one continuous screen. That's a little bit like what it's like to say the matter is made up of particles, you can't see them because they're so small and they're so close together that they blend together to make one overall substance that you observe. Um, if the pixels on your screen are observable if you go close enough, or say cells are observable if you use the proper microscope, atoms are so small that even with our best microscopes, even just recently we can see the atoms, but, in, but until very recently we couldn't even see the atoms with our best microscopes. It wasn't until we met, invented things called electron microscopes that we could see the individual particles. The particles are always moving. So sometimes we like to think of these particles as vibrating back and forth about a median position where this thing's going to go ay, 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 back and forth about this individual spot. Or sometimes, and that's what would happen in a solid Sometimes they can move about, oh, what that was that? Um, sometimes they can move about as long as they stay close to each other. So these guys can all sort of slip slide past each other. So one that was up here could sort of slide down here. And as long as they stay together, they're okay to move around however they want. And that's sort of like a liquid. And then in the most extreme cases, a gas, the particles actually spread out and start shooting right across the room or filling whatever sort of container they're in and bouncing off of the walls. So they're always moving and the amount of motion they have, it depends on the amount of energy they have and the way we observe that energy is by measuring their temperature. The hotter an object is, the faster it's going colder it is, the slower it's going. Finally, there are attractive forces between the particles. So when this particle is bouncing back and forth about this location, one of the reasons he's doing that is that it's attracted to this other particle over here. So it comes in as it's attracted, and then when it gets too close, it's repelled back away, and then as it's attracted, it comes back in. The more attracted that particles are to each other, the more they are like solids. These guys have high attraction. That's why they stick together in a rigid substance. Liquids, we would say, have medium attraction. 
And gases, the reason they don't even stick together but fly about in the entire container is because they have low attraction. Sometimes this attraction is so low in comparison to these other two types that we kind of treat them as if they have no attraction. So those are the four basic rules of particle theory. All matter is made of particles. Too small for us to see them, but we know that they're there. Different types of matter have different types of particles. Salts, for example, form these big crystals. Um, water is a molecular substance, which means it forms these individual molecules. Something like a noble gas like helium is its own particle. He doesn't interact with anybody else, but he just flies about on his own. The particles are always moving. They have kinetic energy, and that energy we recognize as their temperature. And there are attractive forces between the particles. The more attraction, the more likely the material is to be a solid. Uh, materials with a medium level of attraction between these particles are liquids, and low attraction making them gases.